Hi all. Well, even if you haven't played Cyberpunk, you surely can recall a dozen of robotaxis from all the sci-fi movies. And seriously, by 2020 it looked like the autopilot future is almost here. Tesla is able to self-drive. Chinese cars are almost all of them are able to self-drive. But still, it's 2024 and autopilot taxis are not here. Well, first of all, that's because one of two major robotaxi operators, Cruise, has ceased all the operations countrywide in October. Currently, only the other robotaxi operator is working, but its operations are super limited to metro areas of San Francisco and Phoenix. And trust me, that's all for a reason. Robotaxis have done a lot of harm. How? Let's dig together. Welcome to the Analog Vision channel, and today we will discuss what's wrong with Robotaxis and what future awaits us. If you like my content, please like, subscribe, and let's get started. Seeing how autopilot cars cruise down the busy city streets really gives you a feeling that you are somewhere in the future. However, launch of such transport didn't go without issues. Robotaxis mess with fire squads, they drive through construction zones, they block emergency vehicles and even deliver passengers to active shooting scenes. Could you imagine that with a live driver? The representatives of administration and local services of San Francisco spoke their final verdict. Robotaxis are not ready for mass use. And that's despite the fact that California and San Francisco specifically is probably the most loyal territory on earth for autopilot technology. This is how riding a cruise taxi looks like. I have to know, I think it's the fourth time we've been honked at in two minutes of being in this car. During the ride, the robo taxi was honked at not less than five times. It rode many times around the block trying to find the pickup point. And overall, the driving is not the best. It's important that other cars are driven by real people who make mistakes and ignore some traffic rules where appropriate. And robotaxi that fanatically follows traffic rules, spoils the pattern and makes everybody anxious. And this is how riding a way more robotaxi looks like. That's interesting. It took the opportunity to squeeze through a pretty narrow space and did so fine. The ride is much smoother and the driving overall is much better. In many cases, way more behaves like a real person compared to a robot. It makes mistakes, it ignores some traffic rules where appropriate, maybe it even cuts someone off, but nobody honked at the Waymo robotaxi. All the robotaxis are equipped with navigation screens for the delight of the passengers. In a robotaxi, you can switch radio station or set the climate how you want. In such a car, you don't have to put up with wrong temperature or bad music just because you're too shy. You can get top comfort at the price of a regular Uber. Both companies claim that they have done more than a million miles of trips without drivers. Of course, all the cars had drivers for emergency cases at first, but then they got dismissed. Well, and then after that, Cruise has ceased all operations and Waymo has limited them. And while Waymo has managed to retain their license, they still get a lot of trouble. Their robotaxis often cause traffic jams, they turn into dead ends and are not able to turn around, they interfere with the passage of firefighters and ambulances. But still, Cruise was on the news much more often, like in August when two Cruise robotaxis blocked an ambulance and caused the patient to die. They caused just a couple of minutes delay, but it cost somebody their life. But that was just the beginning of the story. 
During the investigation it was found out that first that person was hit by a real human driver and was thrown to the other side of the road and there was driving a cruise robot taxi that was trained on walking humans, it was trained on running humans, but it wasn't trained on flying humans and it just didn't notice that person and drove through them. So that's how that human ended up under the wheels of a cruise robot taxi. That incident made local authorities to come to a decision. Robot taxis are not suitable for busy city streets, they are not fast enough for the different kinds of situations that happen in the city streets and cruise operations should be seized. But even after that decision, General Motors, the owner of Cruise, claims that they are not willing to stop research as their autopiloted taxis get into incidents much less frequent than real human drivers. Yeah, they did some training for local emergency services, but they didn't work out some important questions of interacting on the road and avoiding emergency areas. The police, firefighters and ambulance have a lot of trouble as it is, and robot taxis bring additional headache. And the problem is not only in road accidents. The problem is that there is no legal basis for the new kind of transport and autopilot taxis are already driving in the streets. And so it would seem, an autopilot will not get distracted, fall asleep or get drunk. And by the way, the problem with drunk driving is generally acute in many, many countries. And I personally would say that the problem of drunk driving might be enough to flood the streets with robot taxis and make the streets safer. But the catch here is actually we don't have data. Yeah, Cruz has shown in their report that their cars get into road accidents 75% less frequent than real human drivers. And the catch here is that they accounted only for registered road accidents. Because all those cases with blocking ambulance vehicles, driving into construction zones, etc., those were all not registered road accidents. And because of that, I don't think that we should consider their report seriously. Having all that said, I don't believe in the claims of cruise management that they expect to reach $1 billion revenue by 2025. One doesn't reach a billion dollars in revenue without scaling their business, and currently cruise has seized all their operations. A goal of a billion dollars seems unachievable to me. Yeah, they might reach it by the end of the decade or even later, but currently Cruise has lost 700 million dollars, not earned a single penny. But they have a chance, small, but it's there. The US taxi market is worth 15 billion. If somehow in 2024 they manage to regain their license and scale quickly, they might reach 1 billion dollars by 2025. They have a big advantage over traditional taxis. They cut costs by eliminating human drivers, streamlining production and introducing a new line of cars without a steering wheel. Just imagine, if they improve their algorithms, would you prefer a traditional Uber or a car with an extra seat and no need for human interaction whatsoever? So yeah, if they manage to regain their license and improve driving, I would agree with the Cruise CEO, who says that the only issue is scale. Cruise works with General Motors, which is, by the way, one of the largest automobile corporations. With such a big force behind them, they are unlikely to have any trouble with law or finances, even if Cruise has now curtailed its activities. And Waymo cooperates with the Chinese automaker giant Geely, who helps them with their vast production capacities. I can't say for sure if connecting with the Chinese company helps or hinders way more. All I can say is that if Huawei were in Gilly's place, we could forget about the cruise's competitor. So here's my conclusion. There are no robot taxis in the streets because city roads turned out to be too good an analogy for life. You can follow all the rules, but there always will be situations when you need to be quick-witted, responsive and creative. And therefore, we can assume that robot taxis will fill the streets around the same time their intelligence fully equals that of an 18-year-old person, including making critical judgments. So this was my take on the robot taxi situation. Thanks for watching and share your thoughts in the comments section below. Take care.